In this workshop, we're going to perform transient analysis in this hydropower system. We'll be evaluating system response for four different conditions, runaway speed, fast closure of wicket gates, slow closure of wicket gates, and the opening of wicket gates when the turbine starts up. Let's take a look at the profile of this system. Notice that the search tank is almost 500 meters above the turbine. We'll now enter some missing information for the search tank. We'll also be entering data for the turbine. Remember that we will not be operating the spherical valve during the simulation, which is only 150 seconds. We'll set the time to 999 seconds to make sure that this valve remains open during the simulation. We'll be changing the turbine's operating case for each of the scenarios, uh, but what will be common in all scenarios is the physical properties of this turbine, like diameter, efficiency, moment of inertia, etc. Type the information that you have been provided in the workshop for these fields. We'll start by creating the first scenario, the runaway speed check. The objective of this run is to determine the maximum speed reached by the turbine when the electrical load in the turbine drops instantaneously to zero. Create an initial settings alternative for turbine open. and a new transient child alternative, which will be called instant load rejection. Now create the scenario. And make sure that you assign those alternatives to the new scenario. Select runaway speed as your current scenario, double click on the turbine and enter the operational pattern that you'll use for this scenario. Create a new pattern. The wicket gates will start 100% open and will close at 200 seconds. Remember, the simulation only lasts 150 seconds. So the gate will be open all the time. Select that new pattern and set the operating case to instant load rejection. Compute the scenario. And notice that there are no user notifications for this scenario since no transient was expected as the weaker gates stayed opened. Go to time histories and take a look at what's happening near the turbine. When the speed increases as the electrical load is rejected, there is a change in the efficiency of the unit leading to choking, a decrease of the flow as you can see in this graph.
Go back to the Transient Results Viewer and select Extended Node Data. We're going to evaluate the turbine's speed. We want to see the maximum speed that was achieved during this simulation. Take a note of the point at which the maximum speed becomes stable. It happens at about 120 seconds and you can see it's 930.1. That's a runaway speed. Let's create the load rejection fast closure run. This usually results in the most severe transient pressures. Create a new transient alternative and a new scenario. Make sure you assign that new transient alternative and initial settings to the new scenario. Make sure your current scenario is load rejection fast closure and create a new gate pattern. Uh, for this run, we're going to consider that the electrical load is rejected at 20 seconds and that the wicket gates will start closing at 21 seconds. It will take 2 seconds to completely close the wicket gates. Select the pattern that you just created and select load rejection as operating case. When you use load rejection operating case, you must input the turbine's electrical electrical torque curve. Enter the curve that's been provided to you. We're ready to compute the scenario. Notice the upsurge pressure and also the nodes that reached vapor pressure, minus 97.9. Notice that there are many user notifications about cavities opening and closing at J1 and J2. Plot the surge tank to R2 profile for hydraulic rate and air or vapor volume. Open the time history for pressure and flow at pipe P3 at search tank end. Notice that at about 22 seconds, the pressure upstreams of the turbine spikes as a result of the wicket gate's sudden closure. As the pressure increases, the search tank starts to fill. At about 29 seconds, the search tank starts to drain as the pressure drops. However, flow is restricted and it cannot get to J1 and J2 soon enough to prevent vapor pocket formation. Let's see what's happening at J2. Notice that when the pressure drops below vapor pressure, a vapor pocket forms and then collapses. Let's observe what happens near the search tank. Take a look at the head and flow. Notice that following the closure of the wicket gates, the pressure spikes and the flow goes towards the search tank. And then at about 29 seconds, it starts to drain. Let's go to the extended node tab and take a look at the speed for the turbine. Take note of the maximum rotational speed that we're getting in this run. Let's create another load rejection scenario, but this time with a slow closure. Create a new child alternative of the previous one and call it load rejection slow closure. Create a new scenario. And make sure the turbine is open in initial settings and the new 
alternative for transients, slow closure is selected. Create a new pattern. This time, instead of taking two seconds to close, we will do it slowly and take 20 seconds to close. Select the pattern that you just created and leave load rejection as the operating case. Make sure there are values in the electrical torque curve and compute. Let's look at the extreme pressures and head. You can see that the largest ratio is 1.59, which means the maximum pressure is 1.59 times the steady state pressure. Let's take a look at the profile from the surge tank to the reservoir R2. Notice that in this scenario, there are no vapor pockets forming or collapsing, and the maximum and minimum transient head envelopes are less critical than in the previous scenario. We'll compare the pressure at J1 between these two scenarios. In time histories, let's select the two scenarios and we'll pick the J1 location. Let's take a look at the pressure. By increasing the closure time from 2 to 20 seconds, we were able to avoid vapor pockets from forming and also the high pressures are minimized. As we did before, we'll take a look at the speed of the turbine and take note of the maximum rotational speed that was achieved in this run. Our last scenario will be load acceptance. Uh, in this scenario, the turbine will start in the closed position and then with our pattern, we'll specify how it opens. So we'll have to create a new initial settings alternative for the closed turbine and also a new transient alternative for load acceptance. As we've done before, we create a new child scenario, load acceptance, and we'll double click on it to select the initial settings, closed turbine, and transient alternative. Make load acceptance the current scenario, and on the turbine, check that the turbine is initially closed, and create a new pattern. This time, the closed turbine will start to open at 10 seconds, and it will take 10 seconds more to fully open. Select load acceptance as pattern, and also as operating case. For this operating case, the user needs to input the turbine's rated flow and rated head. You can obtain those values from any of the previous runs and input it here. And you're ready to compute the scenario. Let's take a look at the profile. There are no vapor pockets, and at about 11 seconds, the surge tank begins to drain to compensate for the downsurge generated when the turbine starts up effectively preventing vapor pockets from forming upstream of the turbine. Let us look closely to the surge tank in the time histories. We'll look at flow and hydraulic grade. Here we can see how the surge tank drains right at about 11 seconds starting there, compensating for that drop in hydraulic grade line that was generated when that turbine started up. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like.
If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.